the songs of Zion. And every time I look up here, there's another instrument. And that's good. That's good. We need that. And I'm grateful for that. I want to give you just a little bit about uh, up, uh, upcoming events here at our church. Uh, we will be having a homecoming the first day of August. Our homecomings are always the first Sunday of August, and that has happened to fall on the first day of August. Uh, Brother Gary Gentry uh, will be preaching for us that day. Blessed will be singing for us. And how we do that is during the Sunday school hour, Blessed will be singing for us. Uh, during the, uh, during the, the 11 o'clock, we probably won't get started right at uh, 1050, uh, 1050, 1055. It'll be at 11 o'clock. Uh, we'll get started uh, our preaching service, our worship service that way. Uh, we are doing Doing our food just a little different. Uh, we are doing that a little different. We, uh, some of us met Wednesday night. Uh, it's a lot of the ladies, uh, some of the men. Uh, we don't want to leave those out because we have some good men uh, that cook real good around here and we want to make sure they get credit for that. Uh, but we will be, the church will be, be providing all the food and all the meals. Uh, so we ask you not to bring anything. Only thing that you got to bring is yourself and an appetite. Can you all do that? All right. It's okay to laugh. It's okay to shake your head. It's okay to say amen on that one, okay? Uh, so what we'll be doing, uh, what the church will be providing more than likely two meats, uh, and then they'll be providing uh, the vegetables, uh, canned drinks and water, uh, probably some tea, those type of things. Uh, possibly, uh, more than likely, it'll just be canned drinks and water, uh, those things, uh, and, and it'll all be either bought from a, uh, from, a, uh, from a grocery store like the chicken and those type of things, or it'll be prepared here in our kitchen uh, here at the, at the church. Uh, so please remember that. Uh, it, things may look a little different, but we can still serve uh, a risen Savior that's allowed us to be part of this community for 80 years. Can you imagine that? 80 years God has allowed us to be part of that. Uh, there'll be certain people serving those things, and, and, and when you get over there, uh, you know, they'll, they'll, pro they'll provide you the direction, they'll give you where you need to go, and those type of things. So we have been through a lot, we have weathered a lot, we're coming out, uh, but we want to do that in a manner uh, that still protects our church, uh, but still uh, brings glory to the Lord. Amen? Uh, so just wanted to let you be aware of that. I'm looking across the room here, and I see a lot of babies. I see a lot of children under the age of two under, and even younger. Uh, we here in the near future uh, be looking in the back for a sign-up sheet for a baby dedication. Okay, for a sign-up sheet for a baby dedication. And uh, I know we've done that a couple times, and a lot of folks that's been part of a church, uh, they said, we have never seen that many babies dedicated. Do you all remember that first one we had? And even the second one, we, we, uh, that was just amazing. So look back there in the back. I have not got a date set for that. Uh, this is just uh, uh, an interest paper uh, that you're saying, yes, I want my, 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 my young child to be dedicated to the Lord. And we just make that a, we celebrate children here at the, this church. Amen. Uh, we celebrate uh, how precious uh, God has blessed your family with and allowed us to be part of that. So we're very grateful for that. We are truly grateful for that. If you have your Bibles this morning, are all hearts and minds clear today? Anyone have a testimony that they'd like to praise the Lord for? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Appreciate you, Brother Roger. Brother Mark, good to see you, buddy. Amen. 
Brother, Brother Mark has been out since before the COVID. Uh, Brother Mark has some, some lung issues, and uh, he done the right thing by staying in. We missed you, Brother Mark, but we're very grateful that you're able to be here today. And, and uh, Brother Mark served our country, and uh, we're very grateful for your service, Brother Mark. Very grateful. Anyone else, Brother? Well, you want to sing? Come on. Stand right there and sing, okay? It's a you taste it, taste it, see. Now you lock your song out to LA. Tell your feeling that I know you swear. The place to your say. Amen. Praise the Lord this morning. Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Samuel chapter 8. 1 Samuel chapter 8. Let's all stand this morning as we... 1 Samuel chapter 8. Starting in verse 1. 1 Samuel chapter 8 and verse 1. And it said, It came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel. Now the name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second was Abiah. And and they judged in Beersheba. And his sons walked not in the ways, but turned aside after lucre and turned bribes uh, and perverted judgment. And all the elders... Of Israel gathered themselves together uh, and, and came to Samuel and to Ram and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not after thy ways. Now, now make us a king to judge us like all nations. But the thing displeased Samuel. And when they saw and when they said, Give us a king to judge us, Samuel prayed. Unto the Lord. Father, Lord, as a, as, a, as a church, we need to declare our dependence, not independence, but our dependence upon you. Give us strength here today. Lord, we have a lot of reading. Lord, our eyes need to adjust. Lord, we pray. Lord, I thank you for this day that we can celebrate, Lord, our, depend, our, our independence uh, from a tyrant uh, that tried to lead and guide us in a way that wasn't in accordance to God's word. And I thank you for the men and women that lost so much to fight for that freedom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. Back in 1986, the Sword of the Lord put out an article. And in that article it says, America, who is your king? America, who is your king? America and independence go together like horse and carriage or like bread and butter. America admires men who goes, uh, goes out into business for himself and uh, in the land of such as Abraham Lincoln and, and, and George Washington Carver. We love independence. Amen? Every 4th of July, we celebrate our dependence, our independence. We are proudly independent. Is such a spirit good? Let me ask that a question. We are proudly independent. Is such a spirit good? The answer is yes, and the answer is no. If yes, if it means that we believe in free enterprise, the right to speak uh, for what we believe is to be true, the freedom of the press, and the right to worship according to, how our, uh, to, according to our, our faith. No, if it means that, that we can do as we please. It means, no, that if we are not 
about our brother being our brother's keeper. It means that if gold and gadgets can replace God or science can replace the Scriptures. In summary, independence is wrong if, we make us, if it makes us feel independent of God. Independence is wrong if it makes us feel independent of God. Let us, let us face it, men is not meant to be an independent creature, nor were we made to be slaves. We were created to be happily dependent on God. All went well until Mr. and Mrs. Adam got too independent, deciding uh, that, uh, that, they, that they didn't need God's laws and that they were old enough to do as they pleased. Their fruit, their failure, their folly stand out as a warning signal for any person or nation who think it, it is it who thinks it can do as it pleases and live happily ever after. This week I have been reading this chapter, and the art the writer of this article says just recently. I was rereading the eighth chapter of 1 Samuel, the story of a nation that wanted to declare its independence of God. Give us a king over us, as they cried, as they shouted out to the aged Samuel. We want to live like all the other nations that have a king to judge them and to go before them in battle. We were, we were not made to be independent of God and His laws. He is the Creator, and we, only the, and we only the created ones. Therefore, He that that has the right to rule over us. On this 4th of July, let us lift our voice for the world to hear this question. Nations of the world, who is your king? Friends of mine, who is your king? Make Christ your king today. Make Christ your king today. I'm not sure if you can get any more patriotic than what I am. I'm not saying that our independence from a tyrant and the way that our government, I believe in that fully and I will fight for that fully. But when a country goes forth and believes more in material objects than the God who has blessed this country, then our, de- our independence is going down the wrong trail. As we look at this chapter today, as we look and see, we'll be looking pretty much in this whole chapter. Not verse by verse, not place by place, but just looking at what God has to offer. Now when we see the history of Israel, we see everything that's taken place. We hear the the things that God has done for them. From the time that God had just sent them to, to Egypt as just a small band and a small family to preserve them. I believe that God's hand was upon them and God was merciful for to them. God was great to them, but we need to be careful for what we ask for. We need to be careful of what we pray for. Amen, church? Because we could be sadly sorrowful for the things that we ask for. Let's look here today as we look. It says, as, as we think over and over again, that more people, more people today live like the world and less like God's people. Here, a children of Israel that were brought out of Egypt. They were brought out of bondage. They were preserved from an early time and then were put into bondage and put into captivity. And then they were set free and they seen God's hand in action. They seen, uh, they seen the frogs and they seen the flies and they seen the boils that come up on man and beast. They seen the very first Passover that took place and if the blood was not 
applied to the doorpost, the Passover and death angel would come through and wipe out the firstborn, whether men or beast. It would wipe it. They seen the miracle of, 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 of Pharaoh's army behind them and the Red Sea in front of them and the way that the, the landscape of all of this took place, that there was no place to go but back behind them and they couldn't go that way. There was no place to go but before them and God moved a huge obstacle out of their way. God seen them over and over again, how God provided for them, but yet they grew independent from the blessings of a holy God. We as a nation and we as a church, you and me as individuals must declare our dependence upon a holy God. Let's look at verse 5. In verse 5 it said, And they said unto him, speaking about Samuel, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge over all the nations. And the Lord's saying, Why do you need a king for? I, I'm the one that's given you. I'm the one that, brought, uh, that, that fought your battles. Do you remember when, uh, when Moses was sitting on the rock uh, and, and his arms became, be, become heavy and, and Aaron and Hur was on side of, of, of each of them, steadying his hands and steadying his arms? Who do you think won that battle? It was God above. Listen to us, church. Listen to me very quickly, church, and very diligently today. Who do you think that allows us to win the battles that we face each and every day? We are not... We are not independent of ourselves, but we are dependent upon the Lord. He's the one that allows us to win the victories that we face. They're saying, give us a king. Give us a king that he'll go before us. Give us a king that he'll judge for us. Let's look at verse 20. That we may also be like all the nations, and that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. What's God been doing them from the very, very beginning of time? God has been fighting and preserving and keeping, but yet they have grown independent. I remember growing up, there were some things I said that I'd never say to my kids. I, I, I'd never say because so. Well, Brother Howard, sometimes that's the only definition of God, just because. That may not be a very good definition, uh, Brother David, but... I'm daddy, and because. I said, I'd never say that. I said, when my kids get old enough and they want to play sports, they can play all the sports on Sunday they want. Brother CEO, I'm glad I didn't do that. See, my daddy never would let me play sports on Sunday. As long as it, now if it was in between, uh, it was fine, but Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, Sunday night at 6 o'clock, we knew where we was at. My kids have never played sports on Sunday. They wanted Emily to play on a traveling soccer team. That's Brandy and I's conviction. That's how we feel how we need to raise our children. I said that I'd never say this belt's like a gunfighter's gun. If I draw it, I'm going to use it. Brother Jarnigan, I said I'd never say that, and then the other day I caught myself saying that. I'd never say, I don't care about what all the other kids do, I'm not raising them. They're not mine. You're mine and you're not going to do that. Brother John, I caught myself saying that. Listen, we are not the world. We're not of the world. We don't need to be like other nations. We don't need to be like other people. Our life must be separate from the world. And here they are wanting to be. Here's God's children wanting to conform to what all the other nations that they all the other nations that stood against God and his his laws and his purpose. Now they're trying to conform to what they wanted to be like. We today, I see it in the churches. I see, it in, I see it in our homes. I see it everywhere we go, and me included, that we have become to a place that we said we'd never be. We'd never be in a place that you couldn't tell the church from the world. 
But I believe we've come into a place that it's sometimes it's hard to tell the difference. And how does that change? Well, first of all, it changes that we as individuals and we as Christians become independent from the world and dependent upon our Heavenly Father. Let's look here today. They, they, they're becoming more like the nations around them and less like the children of God. Let's be careful today what we ask for in verse 7. And so Samuel was displeased with all that took place. Samuel saying, I, I've seen, I've watched over them. I know my boys aren't doing what they're supposed to do, but I haven't done anything wrong. And that's a whole message of itself that we could look at maybe at a later time. But we can see over and over again how Samuel displeased. It, he, was, he was unhappy. When's the last time we've been unhappy with sin that's been in our country, sin that's been in our community, sin that's been in our family? When's the last time that we would just said, Lord, I'm displeased with what's taking place? In verse 7, and it said, The Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people that all that they say unto thee, for they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me that I shall not reign over them. Church, who's reigning over us? Well, you say, preacher, you know, we're a strong church. I believe we are a strong, vibrant church. I believe that we're a growing church. I believe that we're a progressive church, progressing in the right direction. I believe, I believe that we're doing things that's pleasing to the Lord. But we ask ourselves personally, me, as a pastor that stands behind here, but first and foremost, as a man of God, as a Christian, as a husband, as a father, am I, am I making sure that what I'm asking of the Lord is pleasing of the Lord? Am I, as individual, the one that, uh, that is pleasing and is supposed to be honoring to the Lord? Am I allowing myself to be called and to be placed in God's hands, or I'm rejecting His calling. Well, you say, preacher, there's just one area right here. I, there's just one area right here, and it's mine. I, 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 I'm keeping it locked up at my house. With my boys, there are not too many places that they haven't found where I've either got tools or I've got keepsakes, and I've got a box in my closet that I keep some keepsakes in. Not expensive stuff. Old knives. You'd never be able to replace them. They're probably not over $5, $10, maybe $20 at most. They're, they're just stuff that people's given me. And I've got that. Why? Because I want to keep it. <laughs> and I've got a box over there. Every time I go out in the yard, I find another tool in the yard. I didn't put it there. And each boy said they didn't put it there, but somebody put it there. That's my box. That's, that's, my, that's my valuables. No, it's not gold. It's not silver. There's no bonds in that. There's nothing, but it's important to me. And I've got that box steeled away in the back of the closet because I want to keep them. You know, so many times we as individuals do the same thing with our heart. We got this one little box way back over here in the corner, and it's way up high. We think nobody can see it up here, but God knows the deepest, dark parts of our heart. Let's get rid of them. We don't want anything in our hearts and our lives that can cause us to grow independent from the Lord. You say, that never happened to me. Adam and Eve said it never happened to them either. When they were walking across dry ground, uh, across the Red Sea, and Pharaoh's army was being consumed by the sand and by the water, they say, Lord, we'll never turn our back up on you, Lord. The wars that were won. The walls that come tumbling down. Oh Lord, we'll never turn our back on you. We'll always be there. We'll always stand strong. But now they are rejecting the one that has given them everything. Just think about what all God's done for them. Just think about where they have been brought from. So many people today have forgotten that. And much like over in 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 19, it speaks about how our life becomes shipwrecked. If we reject that dependence upon the Lord, our life becomes shipwrecked. 
our life become in ruin. Paul was very particular about that. Let's just turn over there in 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 19. It says, holding faith and a good conscience, which, having, which, which some having put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck. And then it gives others there. It says uh, who they have. And it says they've been delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. We as people today, we must protect the deepest parts of our heart so that we don't reject the goodness that God has given us. We see in verses 11 through 17 that there is a great price to pay for rebellion. There's a great price to pay for rebellion. I can remember growing up, there was a way that I I was supposed to act in church. Now, Brother CEO, as a boy, not everybody does that. Let's just be honest with you. Some adults don't even do that. And there's a way we're supposed to act. In public, there's a way that we're supposed to act. And my parents wanted me to know how that way was. And, And if I didn't learn, then I'd feel. Do you ever feel? (laughs) I heard that. And I can remember my dad would say, we're taking a ride on the way home. I knew, Brother Junior, when he said we're taking a ride on the way home, I knew he was taking a ride to cool himself down so he didn't whoop me, thankfully, too hard. I thought it was hard enough as it was. But I had to pay for my disobedience. I had to pay for being disobedient to what they wanted me to be. They were doing that for my own good. Now, when I was 10, 12, uh, you know, 9, 10, uh, you know, uh, younger than that, 6 or 8, I didn't, want, I, I didn't want to pay for nothing. Who wants to pay for, especially a whooping? But they wanted me to have an understanding that there's consequences for everything. There's good consequences. There's good consequences when I go home and I pay my light bill and it's 90 to 100 degrees outside and I go in and my, and my air conditioner is set at a constant 68. That's a good consequence. I like that. There's a bad consequence. I'm going down the four lane and I'm going 71 and a 55. That's coming a bad consequence. There's a good consequence, a good reward that I live my life to the fullest that God wants me to live and heaven is my home. There is a bad consequence that I lift my eyes in torments. Do you understand? There's two sides to everything. There's not just one or just not the other. It has to be both. We choose Jesus or we reject Jesus. And there's great pain and great sorrow in rebellion. Let's look here in verse 11. And he said... This is, this is a conversation between God and Samuel. And he said, This will be the manner of the king, that thou shalt reign over you. He shall take your sons and appoint them of himself for his chariots and his horsemen, and some shall run before his, chari- his chariots. And he will appoint him captains over thousands and captains over fifties and set them to ear uh, his ground and to reap his his harvest and, and to make his instruments of war and instruments of chariots. And he will... Take, uh, take your daughters to be confectionaries and to cooks and to bakers. And he will, he will take your fields and your vineyards and your olive grove, uh, 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 olive yards, and, and even the, ver- the best of them and give them to his servants. And he will take the tenth of your, your seed and, and uh, of, your, of your vineyards and give them his officers and to his servants. And he will take your maid, manservants and your maidservants and your goodliness young men, and your donkeys, and put them to work. And he will take a tenth of your sheep, and ye shall be his servant. So, let's recap all of this. They have been given everything. No one holds anything over them. They've been set free from bondage. 
Isn't it amazing how Israel has, has, has come complacent and forgotten about everything that God's done for them? Just as soon as they got out in the wilderness, things got a little hard, they got a little thirsty, they started murmuring. God would send judgment, they, they would pray God's gracious and forgiveness, and you remember when they started murmuring, God sent the serpents. And then God made a remedy, and that remedy was the serpent set up on a, up, on, up, up on a high pedestal, and anyone that looked towards the serpent was healed. That was God's grace, a picture of God's grace. And then they, they got comfortable in the land which they didn't which they didn't deserve, the houses which they didn't build, the, uh, the olive, uh, olive groves that they didn't plant, the, 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 the wells which they'll, did, they'll, they'll, they'll dig us not. And you see the understanding. We go home and we got two or three remotes set next to our TV, next to our, our nice, comfortable, lazy boy recliner. We've got three or four cars in the driveway that we could drive anywhere across the country. We have a job that's paying us more than in one year than a lot of our grandparents made probably in their whole working career, maybe probably 20 or 25 years of their whole working career. We have health like no, like no other generations has ever seen. Our children can be sent to educate and, and have jobs and, and be, be productive. But yet, yet, we have chosen to rebel. And when we choose to rebel, there will be great sorrow. You see the taxation that was applied to them because they wanted to be independent from the Lord. Uh, they, uh, they, they realized that there was going to be great sorrow and great rebellion. We see in verse 18 that rebellion causes great sacrifice and great sorrow. And you shall cry out. It says you shall cry out that day because of your kings, which ye shall have chosen you. And the Lord will not hear you this day. Oh, I believe today that there are so many folks that are crying out, but it's too late. There'll come a day, two will be working in the field, one will be called out. Two will be thrashing and one will be left behind. Can you hear the great call out that's going to be taking place that day? Can you hear the big cry out that, that one, will be, uh, one will be in bed and the other one will be left? Uh, can you hear the cry out of all the mothers that do not have their babies any longer? Can you hear the cry out because of the rebellion? There was a great cause for sorrow. Let's look at what, taken, what has taken place with, the, with, with Saul's life from this time forward. Now Saul was from the tribe of Benjamin. If you read about Saul and read about his upbringing, he was from the smallest tribe of, of, of Israel and from the least. His family had the least monetary things. He was the poorest. In other words, he said, I'm the poorest of this whole tribe. But yet when you looked at Saul, you've seen a great leader. When you looked at Saul, you seen somebody that had stature, head and shoulders above everyone else. And he was good to look on. The way that men choose their leaders today. But if you look at how his life started in, dec in decline, why? Because he become independent upon the Lord and dependent upon all the things that he could glean, all the sheep that he had taken in, all the, the servants and all the maid servants that he had. Let's look at this. In chapter 16, in verses 9, he was anointed. In verse 9, Samuel anointed him. In chapter 16, he, he, he was possessed by an evil spirit. And we all know that. How many times did, did Saul throw the javelin at, at, at David and David just barely missed? Verse chapter 18, he sought to, to kill David. In chapter 22, he inquired of a witch to what decision to make. Are you noticing the decline? 28. Chapter 28 was his ruin and his suicide. When we 
become independent from what God has set up for us, we become sorrowful and great consequences will take place. Church, I can't speak for your life. You have to speak for yours. I can declare the goodness that God has for you, but when we become independent from what God wants us to become, then we become and we make ourselves a sorrowful individual that's heading down a wrong path. You know, I pledge my allegiance to this flag. I pledge my allegiance to what this flag stands for and the men and women that, it, that, that it allowed that flag to be preserved. Amen? I, I, that this country is great. This country is what it is today because we declared our independence from a nation that tried to rule us with an iron fist. I can track my lineage all the way back to the Revolutionary War. And I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful that I have that heritage as an American. I'm grateful that my children can go to school. And they can go to school with freedom. They can go to school in our community and not have to worry. I'm thankful for the educators that we have in this church. And and, and others that are sitting in churches today that teach right from wrong, but they have their job cut out for them because so many have declared their independence from what this country was founded upon. Church, are you willing today? And you say, preacher, already it will praise the Lord, but are you willing today to declare your dependence upon a holy God that has allowed us to have the freedoms that we can enjoy here today. Fourth of July is not about watermelon and hot dogs. Boy, I eat my share of both and they're good. But it's about the goodness that God has blessed each and every one of us with. Let's declare our dependence upon Him today. Father, I love You today. How easy it is to forget How easy it is to forget of what you've done for us and where you brought us from. How easy it is to forget of your goodness. Lord, let us not. May your hand of protection be upon us and may your guidance be there.